This video contains content sponsored by John Wilson Blades and MK Blades. Opinions discussed in this video do not reflect the views of John Wilson or MK. Well, hello and welcome to the skating lesson. I'm Dave Lee, and I'm thrilled to welcome Olympian, British champion, and choreographer John Kerr. John, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Yes, I just want to remember everyone, after the show, head over to goldenskate.com to continue the conversation. But you were right in the mix this weekend, John, because you choreographed for both Aliona Savchenko and Bruno Massot and uh, for Vanessa James and Morgan Cypress. So I want to ask you, how did you get the call from Aliona to choreograph and, you know, I guess talk through that process of creating her programs? Well, um, actually, the big uh, link up with Aliona and, and uh, Bruno was really through uh, Sylvia Fontana. And um, so they had kind of spoken to John and Sylvia and they had asked about helping them create the programs this year. Mm -hmm. And they kind of brought me on board as well. So both I and Sylvia kind of worked on the short initially because I think um, they wanted to really just do the short and then they might have thought about going somewhere else for the long. Mm -hmm. And then as it turned out, we ended up doing the long program as well. But um the short was, uh, I think they were really interested in doing a very kind of dancey like mm -hmm. theme. So that's pretty much what we kind of, um, we, you know, search around for some of the music. And this was always a piece that I'd always enjoyed listening to. And I always thought this would be a cool, a cool piece to use on, on the right team. And um, they, you know, they blew me away, especially, mm -hmm. well, actually both of them really, because um, their ability to move was so mm -hmm. great for, because especially him for such a big, for such a big guy, that's not, they're usually can be a little heavy on their feet, but he was mm -hmm. super light and um, her, she has like great character and everything she does. So, <laughs> yeah. so the show, I, I like, I felt like the short came together really easily. So, mm -hmm. so that was a lot of fun. The long was a little bit more, um, was a little bit more somber in tone mm -hmm. and that, and that was created a little bit later so that definitely has like a lot more room to grow mm -hmm. but um you know and obviously you know that's the thing i mean you can you can create programs and at the end of the day it, it all comes down to whether they hit the big elements or not to mm -hmm. a large extent because because that's what really builds the program as it goes on so um yeah i mean it was it was great um working with them and then obviously with vanessa and uh, morgan they wanted to make a coaching change. Um, John got the call, and then he obviously showed that both, uh, you know, I was working with him, uh, Sylvia, obviously, Jeremy Barrett, and um, they came over to work for a couple of months, and it really clicked. So, um, yeah, so, I mean, it's such, such, such fun to work with such talented teams. Yeah. Well, talk a little bit about Aliona and Bruno. When you set that program, does she tell you what elements she's going to put in because she has a tendency to throw in a quad at the end of the program or a triple axle? She really takes some big risks in the points. So when you set that, do you know that ahead of time that she's planning on? Or do you just know uh, that there's going to be a throw here and a throw at the end? Uh, that's all I know. Like, I know that pretty much they have a set order of where they want things to be. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I mean, I always knew they were always going to have the, the triple axle. Mm -hmm. um, that, that was actually really interesting because um, especially when we set the short program, mm -hmm. we had this very dancey like part into it. And I was like, there's no way they're going to do this because they'll want to have a, like a really big setup for the triple axle. And that wasn't the case at all. They were like all for it. So, so that, again, I don't know if you noticed, but in the short program, the throw triple axle really doesn't have much of a setup into it. So um, it's like very choreographed. Mm -hmm. um, with the long, no, I had no idea. <laughs> like I remember, because um, uh, I actually went to Oberstorf to kind of work with them a little bit more in the programs. And um, I no, I had no idea they were going to throw a quad in there. So, I mean, if that works, I mean, mm -hmm. hey, I mean, that, that'll be awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, there have been some comparisons to their free and what the French ice dancers did, Papa Doc and Scissor, on last year for their free dance. So, I guess, how did you pick that song? Were you influenced by them? Is it? I mean, I think it's hard mm -hmm. not to be influenced, to be honest with you, because I feel like with uh, Papa Doc and Scissor, they've um, mm -hmm. they've created this whole new style. I mean, mm -hmm. really in ice dancing. I mean, they're they're off the chart. Mm -hmm. um, but it's this very kind of lyrical contemporary style, which is mm -hmm. which is so beautiful and it's so translatable to to figure skating mm -hmm. that, um, yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, to be honest, the, the music um, choice was really had had come from Bruno and Aliona. Mm -hmm. So really, it was just about trying to create something that um, sort of bought into bought into that vision. 
Mm-hmm. And um, it definitely, you know, I, I mean, I think it definitely needs, uh, uh, you know, a little bit more work and everything. But I, I think um, as as it prog- as we progress with it through the season, I think it's definitely going to grow. So because they are a new team and they haven't had, you know, people don't know who they are as a team as much with their programs. What did you try to bring out of them, I guess? Because they have a huge height difference. Uh, they haven't skated together. You know, she's so known for skating with Robin. So I guess what did you try to bring out of them as a pair? To be honest with you, mm-hmm. I think uh, the biggest thing I was surprised about was <laughs> how good they were. Okay. I mean, to be honest with you, I actually think um, in some ways he's, I mean, he's, it's funny because he's significantly bigger person mm-hmm. than um, than Robin, but he actually, I mean, he's so light on his feet. Mm-hmm. And um, I was like, I mean, because he's someone who'd, who'd kind of been in there in competition, mm-hmm. but you wouldn't, you wouldn't necessarily have noticed them. And, and I was sh- like, I, I thought when um, he started skating with Aliona, I was thinking, oh, how good an idea is this? Because, you know, she's been a five-time world champion with this other guy who was a great skater. And this guy, I'm not, I'm not kidding, this guy is just as good. Like, I mean, if you see him in practice, he's seriously talented. And uh, I actually had the, the luck of skating with her quite a bit because he had a, a bit of an injury. And it was, it was um, like, I mean, her knees are so soft. I mean, I was like, I was trying to keep up because, you know, I don't train all the time anymore. So, um, but uh, I was surprised how good they were. To be honest with you, when you have a team like that, mm-hmm. it's, it's as, a, as a choreographer, it's, so much fun because there's literally you can go anywhere with it and they'll go with it because they're very open to new ideas so um the big i think the biggest thing i wanted to try and get out with them was just to like show their quality and show Mm -hmm. their skill and 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 get something that was going to that was going to really amplify that and show that um because when when you're uh when when you have people who are that good it's Mm -hmm. it's pretty hard to mess it up yeah now, what did you make of their performance this weekend? They had some struggles on the big elements. I guess, yeah. Yeah, where do you think they are in their season and, you know, what their potential is? I mean, I think it just shows you, I mean, with, you know, obviously you're winning two, two Grand Prix. I mean, I mean, obviously they didn't necessarily have the Chinese in there or Eric and Megan in there. So obviously they're going to have to start hitting these big elements if they want to, you know, be on, you know, be number one in the world or whatever. So... I mean, but I think that the thing is with their skating, their skating quality is so good mm-hmm. that um, it's definitely comparable to the top teams in the world. Mm-hmm. It's just going to come down to whether they can put out those put those big tricks out when when it's most needed, and that's obviously going to be most needed when they get to Grand Prix final and get to Worlds and everything like that. But to be honest with you, I feel like at the moment they're you know, there are a good few steps ahead where even they can have a few mistakes and still win at most other events. If you take um, the Russians who are the main, the number one Russians who are injured at the moment, the number one Chinese who are injured at the moment, and obviously Megan and Eric, that's when it's going to really count. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess how injured is Aliota? You know, there have been reports that she sprained her ankle or that you know, she, it might even be a torn ligament. So have you heard from her after that performance? Do you keep in touch? Or this... Yeah, we, we do keep in touch. Like um, uh, I was going to tr- – like um, I'd written some notes for them after the Russian Grand Prix and uh, I'll, I'll probably try and write them some notes for um, after this one. But I, I haven't actually had much of an update as to her status at the moment. I know she'd hurt herself, but mm-hmm. um, fingers crossed it's not too bad. Yeah. I guess, how did you compare them to Taras and Morozov here? I know I talked to Robin Solkowi at Skate America, and he said he's trying to bring out the personality in this team. And it's very interesting mm-hmm. to me because this team, they have a nice line, and they have kind of the line that you don't see from, because there's so many newer teams, the top and pairs, yeah. that are really str- you know, strong with the big elements. And this team, it's like they have the line, they have the elements, but they don't stand out on the ice as much. Do you feel that as well? They yeah, they don't necessarily have... It. Yes. And, um, and I think a lot of that comes down to, I mean, I, I don't know if you've noticed this, but definitely I feel like really great pairs mm-hmm. um, most of the time, obviously there's exceptions all the time, tend to get better when they're a little bit older. Like mm-hmm. when they're into their late 20s and, you know, maybe early 30s, that's when they start to get like a really mature like, and they're very confident on the lifts. They're very conf- confident on the big elements. And then you can really start to see their personality and what they can what they can bring to their you know bring to their performance and um they're definitely to me they're not on the level of 
Aljuna and Bruno, just on a maturity level, on a, on a skating skills level, they have the big tricks. I think they're definitely going to be relevant, mm -hmm. um, but they're yeah, they're not there yet. I think they have a lot of maturing to do, and they have a very to me they have a very young look, mm -hmm. which is because they're young, um, and they're going to get better. But to me, they're not quite on the the, the top rank yet. How much of it do you think comes down to music selection for them too? Because I find that they have the most random music picks every year that I just wouldn't pick. I remember they had Lionel Richie one season that it just came from nowhere. I'm like, who is directing this for this team? They're trying to inject something, but something it's misguided. It. I mean, the one I remember was, I think they did, the River Dance, I think was okay. Um, maybe it's the redhead. I don't know. Maybe it's like yeah. give the Irish element to it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because even, um, uh, yeah, because even this week, like, I think, uh, like, the short was good. I thought mm -hmm. the short was actually pretty cool. Like, mm -hmm. I, I liked it. There was aspects of it. Long, I'm just kind of like, eh, it's a kind of little bit whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and that, I, I think, to be honest, though, when you're, when you're trying some of these bigger elements, like getting the quad twist and, and maybe these elements that you're not 100% solid on yet, mm -hmm. um, it, it's hard to mm -hmm. really perform, you know, yeah. and show like your personality and really create a story or create a, a mood or, or something. Um, yeah. So it, it, it can, I mean, you know, I mean, you know, Russians, they can be a bit random sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I guess for you, how do you think that there needs to be a bigger emphasis on kind of people skating as a pair? I noticed that over the last couple of seasons, there are all these newer teams that get together that some of them have the big tricks right away, but they don't necessarily look like a pair that we're used to, you know, with the tracking and everything. You know, do you think that's something that's lacking in the judging system? Yes, yeah. but, I, but I think it is something that judges, even if they might not, even if there's not necessarily, it's spoken about so much, mm -hmm. it's definitely something I hear judges talking about all the time. Mm -hmm. It's definitely something um, I'm trying to work on with Morgan and Vanessa, because I think mm -hmm. that's definitely something they can develop, because they have amazing skating skills mm -hmm. as individual skaters, but sometimes their crossovers do not match. No, yeah. they don't. They don't. I, you're, you're telling me. I know. This is the, they said six or seven yeah, years just, together. What is going on that they have not learned to do the crossovers in unison? Yet? I know. I know. I know. It's it's a bugbear of mine, and it's definitely something you know all of us as part of their coaching team want to improve on. And yeah, I'm kind of like I've said to them before. I'm like, guys, you're making me look bad right now. So. <laughs> when they do crossovers at different times does that mean your timing is a little bit off for everything at the same time you no know, i think sometimes it just comes down to nerves and okay. again people um you'd be amazed sometimes when you mm -hmm. see people train regularly and you see them in competition and you can you're just tearing your hair out mm -hmm. because you're kind of like what what are you doing right now because like literally it bears no resemblance because i mean even up to um skate america um uh morgan and vanessa were skiing lights out fantastic mm -hmm. i mean you'd see in the practice you'd be like they're, they're going to win this event mm -hmm. so to us when you know obviously it didn't go well it was a big shock mm -hmm. you know because everything about it had 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 gone well and, and that's that's the nature of competition but i think all you can do is um you keep sort of you know you know trying to pound the message in in practice and in training um i think the big thing for them which was a little tricky because they kind of came and started working with us in late summer and they don't have any programs and they're a little late and everything. So it's not necessarily something necessarily something you can address straight away. So um, it's definitely something we'll want to address. And we're going to try and address it through the season. But really the time you can address it is in the summer. Mm -hmm. So I think with it being the Olympic year, that's definitely something we'll want to focus on. Because I'll be honest, I, I think you take a team more seriously when – they can do a crossovers at the same time. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, it's one thing I noticed with this team because they have the elements. They have, obviously, a quad throw this season that they're getting closer and closer to landing on one foot in competition. You've seen them do it on Instagram. You know, yeah. She landed it on two foot here, turned out of it. How did you turn this around after Skate America until now? I mean, was it just mileage for them? I mean, because it was pretty shocking to see them not perform well in the competition. I think to be honest with you, I think it's really a confidence issue because, um, and I definitely experienced this in my own career where, um, you, I, I think you, you can, you can believe to a certain extent that you can be someone who's competing for medals and Grand Prix and Europeans and worlds, 
that when you're actually in that situation where you can actually do it, it's a different level of pressure. Mm -hmm. And I think some people can just deal with it. And sometimes it takes other people a little bit longer. It definitely took me a little bit longer. So I can totally relate to it with the guys. And I think, um, that's the thing. I mean, I think we went into this competition of scare America and we felt we had as good a chance as anyone is winning it. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, to not obviously perform, then we have to like really look at how we approach our mental approach to the competition. And I think that's something where we have to get them to believe that they deserve to be in that position. They're relevant. They can compete with, with anyone. And it's one thing saying you believe it, but actually believing it is, is something completely different. Mm -hmm. And, um, that's, again, that's an aspect that, you know, obviously as, as coaches, we have to try and instill that in people. How long did it take you for, to go from kind of the avant-garde corkier British team to a real contender? <laughs> I guess, when did you make that transition? I'm not transition? sure I necessarily made that transition. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like by the time you were at the Olympics, you know, you were, you know, a very seriously um, regarded team. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think, I think to be honest with you, um, yeah, it took a while. I mean, yeah. I, I would say of being on European, on world scene, it takes like five or six years. I think, I mean, obviously there's always your, your people who just go straight in there and they can be like, um, you know, relevant straight away, or they can feel very comfortable being at that level. But you know, for, for most normal mortals, it takes a little bit more time. So, I mean, I think we're definitely on the, I think, um, for the guys, we're definitely on the cusp of it. And, um, you know, it's just gotta, it's just trying to make them believe it. And sometimes people just saying to you, you got to believe it and you agreeing with them. It's not enough. You know, it's, it's, it, it, it's, it's, um, I mean, I, th I feel like this result is huge for them because they, they can, they can feel, okay, we performed a Grand Prix high level, you know, came close to, you know, beating Aliona and Bruno in the long, okay. They didn't skate well, but that, that doesn't matter. Um, and I think, I think we're definitely, you know, a step closer. Mm -hmm. Well, how about let's talk about the dance? You talk about mere mortals. Where do you uh, where do you rank Papadakis and Cizeron and what they're doing? How good are they? Let's kind of break this down a bit. They're ridiculously, phenomenally, brilliantly fabulous. That mm -hmm. I mean, it's funny when you lost Tess and Scott and Marilyn Char Marilyn Charlie in one mm -hmm. swoop. You're thinking to yourself, okay, so dance is probably going to go back a little bit, and then obviously. You know, because progress never goes in a straight trajectory. It, can all, it always has ebbs and flows. And they're just like, um, I mean, they, I mean, I can't say enough good things about them. I mean, they've, I mean, they've really brought this, um, this uh, lyrical contemporary style to skating, which um, is, it, it's done to such a level, which is just, it's just, it's just kicked ice dancing on in the last, you know, two years. Um so with that said, mm -hmm. um, I'm not a huge fan of the short. I think this is one style that, which is to me is not, it's, I don't think they've it's made it strong. their own yet. No. I find that it's awkward when they do, I, I saw them train in person. I went and visited them and I feel like as good as they are, especially doing the pattern when it gets to the swing section, it's not as confident as they are, as they are when they're doing their usual lyrical contemporary style. It's, no, no, I would agree with that. It's a little strange to also see them be up tempo because we're so used to seeing them have a different yeah. character. And I think in that sense, I find that Tessa and Scott's short dance is much stronger. That's where I think the um, the opening is for Tessa and Scott because the sh is on the short dance. Because usually, I think everyone's just being used to um, Papadakis Ciceron say that 10 times in a row yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think they're so used to people of them coming in so strong so prepared um, and the last two short dances I think have mm -hmm. haven't really highlighted any weaknesses um, because obviously with the Spanish and with um, what well, the style was two years ago um, this one is like mm, I'm on the fence with it I mean I'm sure it'll get better I'm sure it'll develop but it definitely didn't knock my socks off. What do you see the as ball, a weakness, I guess, for them? Um, I, they're just not fast enough. I think it's just not dynamic enough. When it switches to the to the mm -hmm. swings to the swing part of the dance, um, it's just like, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, YouTube is such a great um, tool these days, and you know, you watch anything, you grab, you know, you you know, Google search. I'm sorry, YouTube search like um, Lindy Hop. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you'll, something like Hell's a Poppin' pops up and it's just, these guys are just flying. 
Mm -hmm. And there's so much energy and dynamic and that just, it just isn't, Mm -hmm. you know, and and that's the thing. I mean, you're, you're judging it to a pretty high standard, but Mm -hmm. that's their fault because, you know, Mm -hmm. they've set themselves like a really high bar. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I think there's definitely an opportunity for someone to, you know, I mean, primarily Tessa and Scott, but who knows Mm -hmm. as this season goes on. But, um, yeah, I mean, I I think that definitely, um, there is a Mm -hmm. opening. For Tessa and Scott. How the about, long? Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, how would you feel about the free? And, you know, you can compare it to Tessa and Scott's free as well. You know, what do you. Well, here's the thing. I mean, you have these teams, like, so you have Tessa and Scott, you have um, the French, you have um, Zach and Maddie mm-hmm. with a very similar mm-hmm. style of. And the Shibitanis as well. Yeah. Yeah, so mm-hmm. the problem is, I mean, you could say that makes it easier in a way, but I feel like um, everyone's sort of you're playing the French at their own game, but they're mm-hmm. possibly the, they are the best at doing that style. So I, I'm not sure that's the best way to go. I think it's sometimes that's the problem of having um, all the best teams concentrated in two or three different schools is mm-hmm. that you can sometimes get some very similar things. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that the program is, is, is the same in any way. It's just that musically, stylistically, I'm like, okay, you know, I mean, I feel like I'm seeing, you know, the same thing you know and that's and it's great and I love it because I you know I love that style and I think it's very I think it's very it's very nice to see on the ice but it's um I always feel the ice dance competition is always at its best when you see a lot of different styles Mm -hmm. like and you see that's where to be honest I feel like Ilenik and and the Russian team really um show themselves because it was just a different style to what you were seeing in the competition and, you know, I, I, I think, you know, compared to, say, like Marilyn Charlie, it wasn't necessarily the best Bollywood routine I've ever seen, but it was just nice to see something different. Mm-hmm. Um, I think if I was just comparing Tessa and Scott and the French, I would say first impressions, I think the mm-hmm. French is still, is still like a step ahead. Mm-hmm. Uh, in terms of the French, there's been some criticism that Papa Dessing Cicerone's free dance is the same almost the same dance as last year and the year before. I don't see it as much. I see where people see that contemporary style. To me, their last two free dances had a more sweeping quality. Here they're going towards an avant-garde. So they are they have to create the magic more than the music creates the magic. And I was wondering, you know, if you think that it is too similar to last year's. I think maybe a smarter idea would have been, and it's very easy, like, sitting here on the fence. Yeah. <laughs> but... Um, but uh, I think a smart idea would have been to be a little more experimental mm-hmm. and got away from that style and then come back with that style for the Olympic year. Mm-hmm. Because then you're not having four years of the perception that it's mm-hmm. even close to the same. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's something that I definitely have seen teams do before in the past where they maybe experiment the year before and then they come back to their strongest style. Mm-hmm. So I can understand that criticism they're still amazing. I still think they're the best team in the world Mm -hmm. despite that. But um, especially keeping in mind with Olympics being next year, it may have been a smarter move to make, to try and get away from that a little bit more and then come back with that style again during the Olympics. Yeah. It looks like what Marie France has actually done is she took the lyrical contemporary style from two years ago, added slight avant-garde last year, but like just shades of it. And is trying to push them in that direction, but it's to everyone else, they're not seeing that as much. You know, they're trying yeah. to go more towards like what the Duchesnais tried to do. You know, and there's been... Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and look, I mean, I, st- I, mean, I still enjoyed it. I th- still mm-hmm. thought it was a beautiful piece. Mm-hmm. Um, and it definitely has a lot of room for growth, and I, I'm sure mm-hmm. it is. But um, I think uh, mm-hmm. I, I can understand if people have that thought mm-hmm. that maybe they'd like to see something. And, and to be honest with you, I was always a big fan of Tess and Scott every year. I felt like always tried to do something a little different and it wasn't always successful, Mm -hmm. but I feel like if you're, and this goes way back to Torval and Dean days. And I always remember my coach, uh, my, my first dance coach, and Mm -hmm. Mrs. Slater telling me this, that, you know, if you're the world champion, you're the one who people kind of look up to. And the expectation is always, what are you going to show us next? Mm -hmm. What are you going to show us next? And they're showing us, very beautiful work, Mm -hmm. but it's kind of in the same genre. I mean, it's almost like, um, I don't know, it's like an actor who has a certain way, uh, you know, a certain style of movie he'll always appear in. And he's always good in it, Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. but then it's always interesting if they maybe try and you know try completely like I don't know try light comedy or try romance instead of the you know the drama or the action movie and and it, it's cool because yeah. obviously it broadens your ability and um yeah, and I, that was always something that Tess and Scott were great at because they, they always tried to, to try something a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Well, speaking of trying something different, what do you make of Hubble and Donahue's hip-hop short dance with all of the music edits? Uh, <laughs> oh, my gosh. Because, all right, let me let me. The let face me said it. it. Okay. I, I, I am a huge Hubble and Donahue fan. I, mm. I adore I mean, honestly, mm. of the three American teams, I love them the most. Like I honestly, two I Brits in a row said this. Yes, I, I really, I, I relate you. to the most. She's a fabulous, fat. He's a great part of it. She's a. I honestly put her on the very highest sort of, you know, as a female ice dancer. Wonderful. Who's on your list of top female ice dancers? Like, top female ice dancers. Okay, let me think. Um, she's up there. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you. I mean, Madison Chalk's very, very good. Um. I like her. Skating wise, to... Madison Chalk too, because she gets criticized for not being as strong of a skater as Evan. I, I like her um, as look. a performer. I like her look. I like her performance aspect. But mm-hmm. I mean, no, I mean, I, I put, I feel like I put Madison Hubble like, mm-hmm. like right there. Because um, actually, I did a seminar this summer, and you know, I mean, it's funny. I still think I'm quite good sometimes, and then I skate with some of these young guys, and then I realize. <laughs> I'm very good anymore. <laughs> yeah, reality check. But um, but definitely like Madison Hubble, mm-hmm. uh, Caitlin Weaver, mm-hmm. I think is great. Um, Tessa Virtue, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, those mm-hmm. those those are two of the three of the mm-hmm. the ones that you know off the top of my head, like I think are very very strong. How do you compare Hubble okay. and Donahue to the Shibutani's? Um, I thought the Shibutani's had a fabulous free dance last year. I think they had a fabulous idea. I think sometimes if you watched it over and over again, which I did, I felt like it wasn't like the most original core. I think it was just beautifully packaged and they're, they're technically very, very, and you know, talking of, you know, being together, like we were talking about the, um, the unison you know, is there, the, the track. Unison, thing. The unison is amazing. It's phenomenal. Trizzles are always amazing. It doesn't quite take me in this, I mean, look, at this level, everyone's good. Mm-hmm. It's just really, I mean, I always remember like a Italian coach, uh, Valter Rizzo used to say this to me. It's not a question of, I like this person, I don't like this person. It's more, I like this person, I like this person more. Mm-hmm. And that's totally true. And and that that's just for me, like um, when Madison and Zach skate, mm-hmm. they speak to me. Mm-hmm. And more so than the other two American teams. That being said, I'm not sure this short dance speaks to me. Okay. <laughs> Let's go into it. What do you like about it? What do you not like about it? Um, I, I, I don't get it. Like, why, why is there so many musical changes? Is, this, so, is, it that, is it that YouTube video, like the evolution of dance? Yes. Is that what it is? Is that what it is? Okay. It's supposed to be taking it from, I forget, now I'm blanking on what they use for the pattern, but it's supposed to be taking you then through the decades. And I believe they have a piece of music from each decade, which is a great theory. Right. Like that's a great right. essay that you would do, right? It, in a... I think it's a great. I think it's yeah. a great YouTube video. Yes, which is what it is. I'm not sure it makes for a great program. For in, I think yeah, that's the thing. I think I think I'll be dead honest. I think they should just scrap it and start again. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's my honest. My honest. I really feeling. think I, that I, they could win U.S. nationals. Well, maybe not politically, but I think. U.S. Nationals, if they had a better short dance, they would be in a much better stead to do it. Well, that's the thing. Mm-hmm. Like um, we always used to say, it's like when we talk about short programs or in our case, short dances, you can't win it, but you can lose it. And I, my feeling is if you go out with that, you're going to lose it. Mm-hmm. And um, because it's, it's trying to be smart. And I, I just feel like it's, it's like a cool exhibition idea. Like if you had lights, if you had like if you had um, – you know, it was blacked out and you had a, a sort of a, you know, a lighting to it and everything. I think it would be super cool. And I think people could really buy into it. I just think with, with it being quite so choppy. Mm-hmm. And again, you know, that's the problem, isn't it? You know, people say, oh, everyone should try and be different. And then somebody tries to be different and then we all kill them for it. Yeah. But that's the thing. I mean, you have to understand that, that when you try a different idea, people might hate it or they might love it. And that's just the risk you take. I actually like parts of it. I like them skating to push it. They seem to really <laughs> interpret it well. She gets really excited when they when they do the change when they're standing there. But yeah, I agree. That's, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, the turn down yeah. for what is kind of exciting at the end. But 
uh, everything in the middle to me. MC Hammer, Baby Got well, Back. Me. Have, you know, Lil John and I mean, if you're mixing Lil John and uh, James Brown and, you know, I'm just not God. sure that it I'm just not sure that I, th I feel like um, we have such a short amount of time in a program to create a mood or create a story mm -hmm. that when you're just I feel like you're just throwing things in the audience's face and, and, and I feel like nothing sticks, mm -hmm. you know, so, so you're left with something that's very disjointed and mm -hmm. very, um, I don't know, I feel very uninvolved. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like, okay, you tried to do this and, but I, I don't know if it really works in How my you, opinion. Now, does their free dance work for you? Totally. Love mm -hmm. it. Looks great. Yeah. Um, I think it's beautiful. I think, um, again, it's that sort of lyrical contemporary style, which works beautifully in skating mm -hmm. and it, it's very much the fashion at the moment. Um, I, th I saw some great new lifts, um, which is always like a little bit more of a problem with them because obviously, you know, like they're a little, they're not so much closer in height, but clo a little bit closer in size. It's not quite like some of the teams where the girl's much smaller. So it's much easier for the guy to throw around. Um, which is interesting because I saw a few lifts from the French, which I had seen last year. And again, unfortunately, when you're the world champion, it's kind of like up to you to, and I know, I know it's hard, obviously mm -hmm. it is, but when you're the world champion, that's, that's, you know, that's the gig. Um, and I saw a few things like with the lifts and everything that I had seen last year, which was a little disappointing. And, and to be honest with you, that was one thing I felt with the French was, um, I felt like the lifts were you know, there was a beautiful musicality to it, but it was nothing really that if you asked me now, what was the really standout moment? You were kind of like, hmm, can't really think of it. And like there wasn't necessarily an element, like mm -hmm. if, for example, like uh, when Madison and Evan had that crazy lift they did a few years ago where, she, you know, he had, you know, he was basically holding her up here and it was, it was crazy. Um, but um, no, the free dance is fantastic. Maybe they could, um, the free dance of Madison and Zach is great. Um, maybe they could tighten up in some of the holds because I felt like it was maybe a little open in places. Mm -hmm. um, but um, no, there's plenty of room for growth. And I, just, I would amp up the end of music a little bit. Well, to I, bring it home. You know, like we're going uh, on this journey with them and you want like the slam dunk, like the big kiss at the end, the big like. Yeah. Whatever it is. It's... Well, I heard that they kind of based it very much around the program around the first piece of music. And mm -hmm. then obviously they tried to find pieces of music. And the second piece really works. And then I, I agree with you. The third piece didn't work as much. Mm -hmm. But maybe it's just because they are not quite, haven't had quite enough mileage on it. So they don't have quite the energy to stay with it. Mm -hmm. But um, my first impression um, of seeing it was that it's a be it's a beautiful piece mm -hmm. and they have some they have some really cool um, interesting um, transitions in there there's one in particular where it was like a change of edge and a change of hold at the same time mm -hmm. and I've tried something like that before and that's crazy hard and they made it look like it was nothing <laughs> <laughs> yeah well what did you make of Ilyinik and Katsalapov because you touched on you know them a minute earlier with the Bollywood now, this is a team, they're in their third season together. She was obviously considered to be, you know, knocking on the door for a world championship in 2014. Then she and Nikita split. Is this a lot? Is this team having, you know, are they lost right now? What's, what's going on? Um, well, well, that was the interesting thing that had they not fallen, would they have been second? Would they have been in second or third place? Mm -hmm. in this competition that it would have been interesting like how the how the result would have gone i did appreciate that they tried to go with a different style because obviously you know you know um we'd seen you know similarly styled programs in the competition mm -hmm. it was very very open for me mm -hmm. in the long um like a lot of hand-to-hand -to, -hand, to the point mm -hmm. where i was like this is i feel like if i was in front of uh british ice dance judges doing this performance I'd be in trouble <laughs> yeah <laughs> because um you know like we're always told oh you got to do you know better you know mm. more transitions more changes of hold and it was very open they definitely look stronger they, they look in better shape the problem is is that you're always going to compare him to mm -hmm. Nikita and he to me he's just not really on that level mm -hmm. so and he's obviously a little smaller in stature so there isn't quite that same ability to really command because I mean mm -hmm. she's such a great you know she's such a you know a huge personality on the X I mean she really is a star mm -hmm. in ice dancing and I'm not sure that he is quite I mean he he obviously can develop because he's young but he definitely doesn't have that command that Nikita mm -hmm. had so 
that's the problem is that are the a team that I can look at and say they're they're going to be on the world podium in two or three years from what I've seen so far no mm-hmm. I don't think so um can they in four or five years you know by you know maybe who knows mm-hmm. but um definitely not a team that I would consider as relevant Mm-hmm. To the, you know to this year or to next year's olympics but um i think it definitely was a step up for them mm-hmm. um and the, even though the style of the bollywood wasn't quite as on point as what you've seen with uh Marilyn charlie in the past because you know obviously they set the bar really high um but i think you know they have a lot of room for growth and they look in good they look in much better condition than they did last year so you know, I think that definitely they'll probably challenge for medals at Europeans and mm-hmm. they'll obviously try and, I mean, their big thing is to be the number oh. one Russian team. Mm-hmm. That's, I guess, which is going to be the, that's going to be the tough part. Mm-hmm. Or even that, on the world team. Yeah, even on the world team. What do you make, Mark and Reddy spoke a bit about their chemistry and this has been something that's been kind of bandied about over the last couple of years. She had such a fiery, intense, romantic, non-romantic history you know chemistry with Nikita what do you make of their chemistry do they have any they have a nice friendship in practice apparently but it's yeah yeah Yeah, it's funny isn't it sometimes friendships are not the best thing you know like sometimes when there's a little bit more of a you know an edge to things um but um yeah, that's that's the problem. You're always good. Like, I mean, I, I remember seeing them uh, when uh, she skated with Nikita when they came third in the Olympics. And I thought, in a way, as a free dance, I almost wondered whether it was the performance of the night um, mm-hmm. in Sochi. Um, and I, I, you know, I think a lot of us felt like this is going to be the world champion for the mm-hmm. next three or four years in this cycle all the way up till you know, 2018. And obviously with the change and everything like that. And, and that's the problem is that you look at it and you're going, is this ever going to be on the same level as to what it could have been with Nikita? And I haven't seen anything to suggest it will be. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they're, I mean, that's the, that's the problem. Sometimes I watch them and I feel like she's skating with her younger brother. Mm-hmm. And as someone who is the younger brother, I can relate to that. <laughs> but, um, but uh, yeah, so I think... Um, yeah, I'm, I don't know if I'm feeling it, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, I think there's such beautiful... Do we need to put her and Nikita in couples counseling and just work this out for 18 months or 16 well, that's months? The thing. That's the thing. I mean, I don't feel the same magic um, with him. Even though they're probably maybe a bit stronger, mm-hmm. I don't know that I really feel the magic with uh, no. Nikita's new partner. I mean, really, if we're talking about... Um, they're both shadows of their former selves, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's like, I don't know, it's like Paul McCartney in Wings. I mean, it's yeah. just not the same, is it? I mean, it's not the Beals, is it? No. <laughs> yeah. Well, what do you make of uh, Piper and Paul here? You know, finishing third. They were behind because of, you know, they had a mistake uh, in the short dance. And Ilyanik and Zaganshin, you know, had that second place finish. What did you make of Piper and Paul's performance here? Are you a fan uh, of the Saturday Night Fever? Are you? Yeah. As as someone as someone who's been known to give a cheesy performance or two, I'm a big mm-hmm. fan. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> because uh, like I love I love the look of it and I love that style. I love disco and um, uh, it's it's funny because we did a shall we dance show last year and uh, it was very similar stylistically um, to the point where we're like, hmm, I wonder if they saw our show. But um, <laughs> no, I loved it. In all honesty, it was great. And um, again, I think the I think the tango. Um, sometimes I feel with Paul, I feel like he's such an amazingly strong athlete, but sometimes I find him a little stiff, mm-hmm. which in the disco, it doesn't really matter because I think it's a, you want to have a very kind of erect posture and, 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 you know, be very still. I just, I feel sometimes, um, he lacks a little bit of fluidity in his body. Um, like as much as say, if you look at, um, the French, that he has this amazing fluidity. Sometimes I feel like when I watch Paul, he's very kind of stoic and like, which for tango obviously works pretty well. And that's maybe why, why they chose it. And it's great. It looks very, very good. Um, but that, that sometimes is something that still bothers me a little bit with him. Um, again, sorry, you know, we were talking about earlier about some of the, the best female ice dancers. I would definitely put her up there. Um, I think she's very, very good. 
Mm -hmm. And, um, but definitely technically stylistically, let's talk because she gets criticized as well because she is shorter. So she doesn't have the posture and the lines of other people. I I think, I think if you look at, um, even, uh, I think from a pure skidding technique, I Mm -hmm. like what she does. I think sometimes when we talk about lines, maybe not so much, but I think on a pure skidding technique, she has a lot of ability because really a lot of the time you'll see very, very strong guys and mm-hmm. sometimes the girls are getting dragged along and there's definitely, for me, I don't feel that at all with no. her. I don't feel it with her and I don't feel it with uh, Madison Cobble and I don't mm-hmm. feel it with um, Caitlin Weaver at mm-hmm. all. Um, I, I don't necessarily, um, I think um, why I kind of bring that up with Paul mm-hmm. is that if you're trying to look for a reason as to why someone shouldn't be on the in the top five, that's Mm -hmm. maybe something you can see because that's something that, you know, there's definitely a more of a fluidity when you watch the French, when you watch, um, you know, Zach and Maddie and some of the other teams. And I think that's still something that he's going to have to work on to, you know, before he's considered like one of the, one of the top, top contenders. Mm -hmm. Do you think being kind of the quirky, cheesy team works? Can you move up being that team? Do you max out at a certain point? Are you going for that token bronze? Uh, you know. Well, that's the thing. I mean, I mean, even if you look at the free dance from last year, which I thought was super interesting, I thought it was mm. very cool. And it's that's that's the thing I think where we have to be careful in a sense because because say this lyrical contemporary style is being so successful, um, everyone gets drawn to do it. And 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 as you know, like the top teams kind of set the style all the way down the rankings to junior to novice to whatever. Um, so then you see a lot of the a lot of the kids coming up doing that style and not necessarily trying other things. Mm-hmm. And and to me, ace dancing ace dancing's lifeblood has always been the variety. Mm-hmm. And I think can you win with a it, it doesn't happen very often. Mm-hmm. Can you get a medal? Yeah, this is happened more often. So. Um, I appreciate what they do mm-hmm. because I think they're definitely one of the teams who does try and do different things mm-hmm. and tries to be a little quirky and tries to seek out, you know, different ways of doing things. Um, my more complaint sometimes is more of a technical aspect where sometimes I'd almost, you know, as I said earlier that, you know, he, I sometimes find him a little straight in the back and mm-hmm. not having that same fluid fluidity as you might see in a, Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, but I mean, I think they, you know, they're still pretty young. They still have time and they're still getting better. So I don't see any reason why, you know, they couldn't, you know, be up there in the medals in the next, uh, maybe not in this cycle, but definitely Mm -hmm. if they want to stick around long enough in the, you know, in three or four years time. Mm -hmm. Now let's move to the singles a little bit. You talk about styles. Javier Fernandez always has a bit of a, uh, Showy, uh, I de- definitely showy free skate that he does this year. It is uh, Elvis last year. It was Guys and Dolls. You know, for him, does it just come down to landing the jumps, hoping Hanyu makes an error or two, and being the consistent one? No, I don't think so. I, I honestly think, I feel like Javi's our generation's Kurt Browning. I mean, if you, I mean, if you watch... Um, um, watch Javi. I mean, he has a mm-hmm. beautiful knee bend, not just on the landings. I mean, he's just so soft and, and I feel like, no, I mean, I love Javi and I think he's mm-hmm. so great for the sport. He's, he's, I mean, obviously he's come from a country with no skating background at all. Mm-hmm. And he's created this whole groundswell of support in his own country. And, and he's great for figure skating. Um, and I think he's, he's, He's ve- to me. He's very entertaining. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I think the biggest thing for him is his conditioning because he just mm-hmm. seems to s- run out of gas sometimes, mm-hmm. which I felt like he did a little bit in the Elvis Loan program. Um, but no, definitely not. I think he's mm-hmm. totally up there as a skater. As um, it's a different style. I think it's. I think it's like if if people go back long enough. Um, to me, it's like comparing like Victor Petrenko and Kurt Browning, mm-hmm. which when I was a little kid was yeah. the first rival rivalry I saw. Talk about running out of gas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 Victor for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, think too many cigarettes. I think. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, I mean, I think um, it's just a very different style, and I love them both, and they're great for the sport. And um, no, I thought his Elvis was 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 mm-hmm. really fun, really entertaining. Definitely needs a little bit more mileage. And 
you know, that's the thing. I mean, you you got to be so many things. You got to be a bit of an artist, and you've got to you got to have the goods because, I mean, in all honesty, for me, the performance of, in the men's event was Adams in in the mm-hmm. long program. I thought it was stunning. Mm-hmm. Like I thought it was so beautiful. I thought it was so beautifully created. And yet, here's the problem: if you only have one quad, how do you compete with somebody who has three or five? In the case mm-hmm. of Nathan Chen, so. Um, but I thought it was a beautiful, beautiful performance. Let's get into that a little bit because Adam has this stunning performance. Then we have the problem, I think, of the judging system where because Nathan is attempting all of these quads, the program is very generic. I mean, I can't tell you any of his choreography. I mean, he does some spread eagles a little bit but there as transitions, but I don't remember anything of Nathan's programs besides the jumps. And there are moments of Adam that I remember, you know, choreography. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there was like two or three moments. And to be honest, yeah. if you if you as an artist or as a performer mm-hmm. give people two or three moments that they can remember, mm-hmm. that's amazing because yeah. you know, you know, we have so much information all the time coming in, especially during a competition, that if you can remember two or three moments of one person's program, I mean, you've done it. Yeah. Um, but um, no, you're right. I mean, the the irony is is that I mean, I've seen Nathan, you know, growing up since he was like mm-hmm. a little kid. And he actually is a beautiful skater. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he, to me, was an, was an artist when he was a little kid. He had it, those performances that everyone remembered, too. The Godfather is like an 11-year-old or 13-year-old. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But he's obviously decided um, that he needs this stuff. And as a 17-year-old, I don't think he quite has that ability to do both at the same time, mm-hmm. do all the jumps and also be an artist. And I think that that's maybe a bit of a tactical decision his team have made is to maybe just go a little generic and just, you know, do what you need to do to, to win the competition or, you know, blow away the competition with your technical ability. Um, I, I totally agree. The program was very generic. It was very old fashioned. And I, you know, I think I can't even remember what it was. Yeah. Polynesian dances or something like that. But, you know, like, or Jarazad or something, yeah. something very Russian anyway. And um, no, I mean, I think it's, when people start doing programs like that, it doesn't feel very modern. And I think mm-hmm. that that's sometimes where we suffer as a sport is it seems like we're kind of a bit old fashioned. And I think Adam was the perfect riposte to that was the, um, um, was the fact that he, you know, chose this beautiful music, um, and took me immediately. And then obviously took it into the cold play and everything. So it was, it was just, you know, fabulous. What did you make of Dennis Tan? Again, I, you know, again, Dennis is a beautiful skater, mm-hmm. um, but I thought the program was very generic. I thought mm-hmm. it was very, the problem is, I don't know, I'll probably get in trouble if I ever see him, <laughs> but um, uh, with uh, Nikolai, I feel like it's just very five years ago, you know, like I feel like, I, and Nikolai is a great choreographer, but I just feel like I saw all this, like I've seen it all before. And mm-hmm. it's, it's just kind of, I mean, I don't know if maybe his strength is more in that he has this ability to get the most out of skaters, because definitely he he's shown it, that he has mm-hmm. success with skaters who maybe haven't been successful before because he maybe can mentally get them to, together or give them more confidence in themselves. But, but like from the program point of view, again, to me it was, I mean, he's just a better, he's on a higher level than Nathan, but I felt like the program didn't really do anything for me at all. Mm-hmm. But he landed this, he landed the jumps and, you know, he, he looks, he looks fit, which he hasn't for the last few years. So he's, you know, I feel like he's going to be, he's going to be up there. He's going to be relevant. Yeah. I think they made a more conservative choice just to get him in shape as well. When you watch it, I mean, it looks yeah. like Nikolai, the interesting thing about Nikolai is that he's not someone that has set less in time. So as your skater, you kind of have to compete for his attention and it yeah. looks like his attention is on Weaver and Poge. Obviously, Dennis Ten is going to be a focus, you know. Yeah. And then he has his wife in the rink and his daughter. So yeah. everyone is trying to get. And then his, Jimmy yeah. Ma, who's coming up with quads as well, and it's yeah. a really interesting dynamic. Um, I, yeah, no, and it, it 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 is, and it's a very Russian way of doing things. Yeah. What I will say is this: that I remember it was a similar situation because I was in New Jersey. I wasn't in Hackensack, but I was in New Jersey around that time. And I remember Javi mm-hmm. was Nikolai's student, and mm-hmm. I don't think he would really ever really pay much attention. Mm-hmm. And then you know, kind of almost forgot about him. And then he obviously goes to Brian, and then mm-hmm. look look where he is. Yeah. So. Things can get missed when you, that's the way you operate because you can be successful because he obviously has been, but there's a lot of 
people who he's missed out on being successful with, in all honesty. What did you think, um, just to, you were talking about five years ago, I wanted to get your opinion if you had seen Weaver's Imposure, Weaver Imposure's new programs under Nikolai, and if you had an opinion on that. Um, I haven't actually seen them this year because uh, just with, um, you know, I've just mm-hmm. been you know, working a lot. And everything, you have a but, baby uh, on the way for people who got don't. got a baby yeah, on the way. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, I did dinner tonight. That's pretty, um, you know, that's, that's why I was a little late. Oh. I did dinner <laughs> so um, it takes me a while. I can do it. It just takes me a while. Yeah. Um, but uh, no, I haven't. But I am interested to see it. I think mm-hmm. it was a big change for them. I feel like mm-hmm. they probably felt like they needed to make that change because they got a little stuck. Um, I really hope that they can, um, they can progress because I, they work very hard and I think they've been a great team for the last four or five years. Um, I th- I just think it's, it's just the problem is that when you're immediately regarded as the number two Canadian team, you know, that's going to be tricky. Um, I mean, it's tricky already for the Americans. Who do you push? Do you push, you know, Chop and Bates or do you push the Shipatanis or, you know, maybe, who knows, like uh, Hubble Donu. Um, so that's, you know, that's going to be the tricky thing. They're going to have to really step up because that's the, I mean, look, people always say that it's a done deal. The results decided in dance. I'm telling you, if your stuff is good enough, eventually people will notice and you'll get, you know, you'll get what you deserve. Mm-hmm. That's always the way we kind of felt about it. And that's, I feel like more often than not, it, you know, that that does happen. Mm-hmm. I mean, you always get, you always get questionable results in anything, but um, I genuinely feel that if, you know, if they, if they, if he manages to make them kick on, mm-hmm. then, you know, there's no reason why they can't be back up there. Mm-hmm. Well, speaking of interesting choices, I know Medvedeva, you said, was the one lady you had a chance to watch this weekend. <laughs> what did you make of the 9-11 program? And what do you make of that? She is the world champion. You said the world champion sets the style. What do you make of her style? And what do you make of this program? Um, I feel like it's, in, my first thought was, uh, I don't know. I, I feel like sometimes when... And this tends to be a bit of a Russian thing that they tend to lay on a bit thick. Mm-hmm. And um, like, so sometimes, I, I don't know, I feel like, you know, with having, like, I'm not a big fan of having the the audio in there. I feel like mm-hmm. that's a little, I feel like that's a little naff, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, I, um, her skating's fantastic, obviously. Mm-hmm. She's, you know, technically, like, brilliant. Um one thing, one sort of whole thing is I hate the skates. The skates annoy the hell out of me. Yes. Those Adidas skates with the holes in it, I, I just... I, I hate the Adidas skates in general because of the way that they pitch you forward by putting the heel. The heel is a little bit yeah. higher, so it kills the natural line. And everyone looks like, especially the ladies, look like they have blocks on their feet. And to the, me, it, if you want to look like you have... And because of the way, I feel like the knee bend is a little different because of the way... They're yeah. pitched forward, so the skating skills never look quite as good. And then if you want to look really unpolished, put it a big box on your foot. And I feel like, yeah. yeah. So the girls, I always feel like the ladies who don't wear them look classier. My opinion yeah. will yeah. never be sponsored by them, but that's, I think it looks so tacky. And so it so cheapens you. And if you're a world champion in them, it's always like, mm, to me. Ooh, you're yes. right <laughs> Yeah. I know. No, I totally get what you mean. I'm just like, I'll, I'll be honest with you. It distracted me the whole performance yes. with those skates. They were just hideous. Um, but um, I, ah, I don't know. What do you think? Um, I, it's last. It's similar to last year, except last year's was more effective. Um, I want to see more. I want to see. You know, Morozov gave an interview where he didn't. Obviously, he was promoting skaters he worked with, but he was implying that she hasn't really developed artistically. Right. She's not saying something different than she said last year. I think it's still a little bit busy. You know, where you see like the ladies that are really on top of their game. Yes, she's doing a lot of transitions, but it's not communicating broadly when you see Malasada and she, you know, less is more. And yeah, no, no, I agree with that. I mean, I I think sometimes people say, Oh, there's so many transitions and I'm just like, yeah, but it just looks like very random, busy steps. And that's the thing. I think when you're trying to, um, you know, when you're, when you're trying to maybe link your performance to something, obviously like nine 11, it's gotta be very, I don't know. There's got to be something really special mm-hmm. about it, and and just very sincere. Mm-hmm. 
And I don't really think it is. I just feel like it's just trying to make something very grand about your performance. And it isn't. That's, you know, it I, reminds me of Averbuch's program that he did. And that same feeling, not that these programs are similar, but the feeling of you're not sure where the sincerity is coming from. When yeah. he did it at the Olympics in 2002, when they did a time for peace. And yeah. It, and the program, you know, the costumes had gone through the shredder, which was the style then. And yeah, it just it has that strange feeling as an audience member. Is 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 it pandering? Is it exploiting? Is it you know? It just doesn't I feel. Think, I think that's a good word. I think I think especially with it being in. I don't. Maybe it was just because obviously with the anniversary of mm. um, the Paris attacks last year, it, it felt vaguely exploitative to me. Mm. You know, like not to say that as an artist or anyone you can. Mm you know, give your interpretation of what you feel. But I think when you put in audio and things like that, mm -hmm. I mean, that's not really much of a, it's not much of a metaphor or it's yeah. not much of an interpretation if you're just putting audio mm -hmm. from something that happened in your performance. I think that that's just, I, I, no, I just don't really feel very comfortable with that. I'd really like to see her with another choreographer because even sometimes the Russians even set the programs without the music on and then they put the music, you know, they don't choreograph necessarily yeah. to each note of the music. So it's an interesting thing. In some, I mean, that, that's always, it's always an interest. It's actually kind of interesting. Like, um, even when you're doing choreography, you know, like a big thing mm -hmm. it's that, um, if you can have a rink where it's just you or the, mm -hmm. the, the, um, the skater or whatever, and you can play the music as much as you want, that makes a huge difference. So often you'll see that you have to make up a program and you might get to hear the program twice in an hour. Mm -hmm. And it's just really, or you know, like you've seen everyone where they go around with the, you know, listening to it in the yes. headphone to try and get it. Mm -hmm. And it's always hard sometimes to relate that to the performer or um, you might not see them very often. And then obviously they go away somewhere and then it, it kind of changes. And that, that's always, that can always be a frustration from a, as a choreographer, but, mm -hmm. You know, that's just the gig um, where you, um, you know, you try and do your best for someone and sometimes they, they really stick to it and sometimes they don't. And, you know, but I guess you just have to always try and make it as close to the original vision as possible. Mm hmm. I want to ask you a couple of things. You know, you mentioned earlier about, uh, you know, believing that you belong at the top. I know that you didn't see Gabby Dalman here, but she was in the top three after the short struggles in the long that seemed kind of freak errors. She missed a triple toe, which is one of her best jumps. You know, she has a great triple toe, triple toe. In terms of her having seen her skating before, do you think it is a matter of believing that she belongs up there at the top? Totally. Mm -hmm. um, I, I actually, um, I was up uh, doing a seminar in uh, Toronto and I saw her practice and mm -hmm. she really reminds me of like uh, Joanne Rochette. And Joanne Rochette was a fabulous skater for so many years who just didn't do it in competition mm -hmm. and then obviously um in vancouver like eventually under those amazing circumstances um with her mom passing and everything and managed to put it together but i honestly only think it's a matter of time and it, it's literally sometimes when some skaters who haven't had that success in junior mm -hmm. and come it so they don't necessarily have that history of success and then and then obviously their 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 skating is put them into that situation where people are viewing them as someone who can be a medalist who can be like a world competitor like a you know like a high placement world competitor and it, it takes a while to feel comfortable with that because you can do as many clean run-throughs and practices as you want but it's so different when you're out there in competition and um she to me is i think she's a breath of fresh air in lady skating because so often you see this very stylistically similar you know performance mm -hmm. in lady skating that then you get this very athletic powerful you know like um you know different kind of performance um and it really reminds me of uh of what joanna rochette brought to competition as well mm -hmm. so i think it's just going to be a matter of time for her and i i remember seeing her somewhere earlier this season and i felt the same thing i mean it's just fun to see girls jump really big i think mm -hmm. that's super cool well, what do you make of Gracie Gold? Obviously, you're in the United States. She's obviously been struggling. It's not a secret. She's made a lot of statements. There's been a lot of comments made. She talked about her weight. Tarasova talked about her weight, Yinnick's weight. Uh, Tarasova also congratulated Medvedeva for not eating between last season to this season. Uh, <laughs> there's been a, you know, just like so much going on with Gracie, her confidence, everything. Do you think she needs time off, a break? What do you... 
Um, I think the problem was, was my understanding was that maybe she'd had a little too much of a break because, um, I think, um, I think it really hit her hard because mm. I think, again, she's someone who's ready made for success mm. and, um, it was all set up for her to win the world's mm. last year and it didn't happen. And I mm. think it's probably the first time in her life where I don't think she seems like someone who's doubted her ability very often. And I think this, I think this really shook her. Um, with what happened at Worlds in Boston, so I think I think she's gonna I think she's gonna get past it. I mean, look, no one can be that mm-hmm. no one that good is gonna be that bad for long. Mm-hmm. Like, and I think um, like we saw what happened with Ashley Wagner, and we've seen it through the history of skiing. That sometimes people just have bad years, mm-hmm. and I think maybe it's who knows. It's all set up for her to come back in an Olympic year and mm-hmm. be the first American to win, and you know mm-hmm. since. Uh, Back, uh, what was it, Syracuse, 2002. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and that would be, and again, and then all of a sudden, you'd be the, the golden girl again. Yeah. So, um, so I think, uh, I, I, honestly, I mean, she's got too, she's got too many, you know, like uh, weapons in her arsenal that she's not going to be relevant. And I think um, definitely there's a confidence issue. Maybe, who knows, maybe it needs a change of scene, a change of, uh, you know, change of I don't know maybe change of coach or or change of choreographer who knows but um or maybe it's just a change of mindset where she starts believing in herself as you know as we've said that's it's not as easy you know we can all say oh you got to believe in yourself but actually <laughs> believing in yourself is a different thing and um no I mean she's gonna be back I think mm. she's gonna be fine and she's gonna be good and I didn't I'll be honest I didn't think she looked that heavy no. I think I think yeah. she, she, to me she just looked she just looked under trained yeah and she looks like she doesn't she's lost confidence to so. me it looks like the confidence the belief the desire is what's yeah. missing not necessarily anything physical I think anything physical is a manifestation of not feeling yeah. ready to go internally yeah so. yeah no, I think I think you're totally right. I think honestly, um, I think that's something I didn't touch upon was mm-hmm. was do you still have the desire to do this? Mm-hmm. And I think you'd be amazed um, with some skaters. Uh, like I always remember my coach uh, Yevgeny Platov telling me the story about how um, Yagodin, and this is not long before he won back in 2002, basically was skating awful, and then he disappeared for a week mm-hmm. where nobody knew where he was, and basically he went and lived in a cabin for a week. <laughs> in a forest and nobody knew where he was, nobody could call time. And then he just turned up one day looking a little worse for wear. And he's like, all right, I'm ready to go. And maybe, I don't know, maybe she has to do that. Maybe Gracie go in the cabin in the woods. God, I mean, not with any clowns, <laughs> but it sounds, but, it sounds yeah. like a horror movie. Like that. <laughs> yeah. Maybe she needs to go on a hike. Maybe we'll put it that way. Uh, yeah. Know, you know, in LA where they take all the pictures. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> in the canyon. Yeah. yeah. Well, do you expect Malasada to be back at this point? She is probably uh, the, the best free skate I've ever seen her have. I mean, it's the most beautiful program. It is beautiful. It's so beautiful. It's just the problem is, it's just that have, you know, like. How much can your body take and come back? From how much can your body take? And um, people have just, you know, people have caught up. And mm-hmm. that's the thing. I mean, we, you know, we touched on it earlier with, with, with Adam, that, who had easily, to me, the most beautiful performance. But unless you're doing two or three quads, it's just that someone can rack up so much, so many more points than you can. And for Mao, you know, without the triple axel and without triple, triple combinations, um, can you compete? Mm -hmm. And as of now at the the very highest level, no. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I mean, she's always, you know, she always adds so much to the competition and, uh, I'm sure she brings so much sponsorship money to the competition, so they don't want her to go. Um, but um, I think she's given so much to the sport, and it's to me, it's it's a little sad that you know when you're someone who's always been up there winning, or you know at the very worst second, mm-hmm. that you know you're kind of tripping around in seventh or eighth place, and that's it's not really something I want to see as a someone who's been so wonderful in our sport. Mm-hmm. Um, because to me, she can give those beautiful performance in gala or exhibition, and there's plenty of those in Japan. And um, I'm just, yeah, that's the thing. I'm just kind of struck by, like, do you really want to compete still? Because you know you've been you've been fantastic for a decade. So you know maybe maybe it's enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree with you. Well, overall, wrapping up, what would you say your MK moment of the competition was for this past week? 
Oh, uh, let me see. I think, to be honest, it would be Adam Rippon's loan program. I thought mm-hmm. it was beautiful. I thought it was um, – there was so many – there was so much beautiful, beautiful choreography in there. So many wonderful touches. Um, he did quad toe, which I'd never seen him do before, which I was really happy for him. And, um, yeah, I mean, if he performs like that all year, maybe he can add an, maybe even one more quads. He's going to be right up there because, um, our, our sport needs our artists to mm-hmm. stay in it because otherwise, you know, we're going to be, you know, it's it's like um I think what was interesting with the uh, Rio Olympics um was uh, the variety you saw like I remember with the um I think it was uh, Simona Biles on the beam mm-hmm. with her, her amazing sort of tumbles and then you saw the Dutch girl who eventually mm-hmm. won who is was spinning everywhere and it was yeah. just great yeah. to have that variety in competition so um so yeah I really hope that he can keep it going maybe add one more jump just to be like a little bit more competitive but that was easily so Adam Rippon was definitely my performance of the week well my performance my MK moment of the week you have to google this now is Laureen I can't even not even gonna pronounce her name her last name <laughs> starts with an L she starts the program as Sandra D in Greece as Sandy innocent Sandy and mid-program, Fabian Borza choreographed this. It changes to Sandy at the end of the musical. And I don't was know... It what... to... Was it slutty Sandy? Yeah, <laughs> slutty Sandy at the end of the program. I don't know if it was good or bad, but it was French. And but it was... Ma- it was ma- See, that's the thing. Only the French can get away with that stuff. Yes. I feel like if I did that, I'd get crucified. But Fabi, I can get away with it. I don't know. To me, the music edits were strange, but you have to go Google it. It was my moment of the week. Thanks so much for coming on, John. We really my enjoyed pleasure. having you. Thanks. And remind nope. everyone to hold an edge and look sexy. Bye, guys. Nope.